Recently I went to one of the best festivals of my life, so I want to give you a review what it was like to be there. Sorry this is two weeks delayed because I became very sick afterwards with Covid and my voice was gone. Meeting many people without wearing a mask is still not recommendable in 2022. On the other hand, you can't stay home forever. Keep a true rising too is what I want to talk about. On the first night, Friday, we got the special Grim Reaper tribute. Very well and respectfully done with guests like Harry from Jack Panzer. A positive surprise were Kev Riddle's Baphomet, playing a bunch of Angel Witch classics. Here's a glimpse of my favorite band of the evening, Holocaust. You guys are harder than we are, what the fuck? <laughs> 41 years ago, there was an album released by the name of The Nightcomers. Tonight, we will play every song from that album. So, come on back! On Saturday, after the speed metal attack of Riot City, Witch Hazel sounded like lame hippies. I liked the band, but honestly, they were the only ones who musically didn't fit well on this festival. They'd better be booked for the Doom Festival taking place on the same location sometimes. The Demon Pact reunion gig was interesting. They had been really heavy for 1980 and appeared with four original members, plus one young man with baggy pants and white socks. Ah, do your worst! who was one hell of a lead guitarist, though. Demon Pact were followed by Blitzkrieg, whose set was a bit short and limited by the festival organizers to old songs. I don't know if somebody would request that, because Blitzkrieg are one of the few bands who write new material perfectly in line with the old stuff. Anyway, here you are. <laughs> The rest of the day you couldn't go wrong with Diamond Head, Avenger or the Tigers of Pantang. Paul Diano was in better condition than last time I saw him. Quartz I saw for the first time actually. They were probably the oldest band of the festival, which means something, but got so much strong material from Wildfire to Satan's Serenade and finally Heaven and Hell for their ex-member Jeff Nichols. Perfect. One little rant in between, and one of the bands finished Saturday don't remember which, and everybody in the front row was clapping their hands, one guy from somewhere behind was pushing others out of the way to get to the front row, not giving any applause to the band, just shouting, I want a guitar pick, give me a guitar pick. Now in the old days you were standing where you were, and sometimes you caught a drumstick or a guitar pick thrown into the audience. Most of the time you didn't, which was perfectly okay, because not every day is your lucky day. My advice is, don't let your collector's urge lead you to behave like a prick. Nobody wants situations like at the football stadium where kids are showing posters saying Number 10, give me your shirt after the match. No wonder that some football clubs started banning such stupid begging posters. It's annoying for the other fans. Yeah, rant over. 
Saxon headline Saturday and did the usual routine, strong arm of the law, denim and leather, wheels of steel, which is fine. But it didn't stay till the end, as the best day of the festival was yet to come. First band I caught on Sunday were Tentation. I love their album, Le Berceau Did You, and it was great to see them live for the first time. There was a tiny French girl standing next to me going crazy for good reasons. See for yourself. Next band were Titan, whose Kev Riddles made a nice announcement, summing up the feeling of the festival. He said he's 65 now and sometimes wonders if he's too old, but when he's standing on the stage of this festival, it's just great. Torch, Cloven Hoof, The German Tyrant and Gravestone delivered the goods before Brian Ross returned to the stage for a triumphant show with Satan. They were the only band who started delayed. Altogether the festival had been running remarkably well on time. British metal is the best and these days provided plenty of proof. Almost like an apology, Riot Wells to show on Sunday evening that America also has good music to offer. From Thundersteel to Swords and Tequila, they had many classic tunes to play. I hadn't seen Riot for a couple of years and this was awesome. The ultimate sonic destruction was Venom's duty. They left their guitars broken on the battlefield, sorry, concert stage. Three amazing days were over. It was not sold out, but probably close to that. At least you always had some space left to move instead of being squeezed into the hall. 
It was all very well organized and such a pleasure to witness this music being played to a big crowd, because if bands like Avenger, Titan, Mithra would play their own shows, they'd be playing to 50 people. And even the bigger names like Tigers of Pantang or Satan would be only attracting maybe 200 or so. The demise of Steve Grimmett reminded us all, this won't last forever, so use your time wisely. Goodbye. <laughs>